The Abolitionist Tea Party just finished its first tour, um, which was a powerful journey um, with myself and my co-pilot, artist Natalie Marks. Um, we had the opportunity to travel to different cities uh, in the Northeast and host these tea parties, which center the experience of plants and plant medicine and the different ways that they endorse abolition as a strategy for life. So yeah, so on the back of each one, if people want to mingle after, it says the botanical name and then there's like an embroidery. I think for me, the highlights of the tour uh, included the intimate conversations with folks who maybe are less familiar with abolition. And there was something about the process of drinking tea and allowing this tea to uh, soften resistance so that it opened people up to the possibility of a landscape without prisons or an abolitionist future. Um, those intimate settings where the tea parties were a little bit smaller uh, were some of the the more powerful moments. I think about the abolitionists in this area. Uh, mm -hmm. So abolition from slavery comes to mind, just how this area produced a lot of particularly white, but other abolitionists, including like like Harriet Tubman, finished like decided to settle here after winning the war. Like there's something about that energy. Yeah. It's hard for me not to say that, you know, the biggest highlight of the trip was the end and rocking up to the grave of Harriet Tubman and presenting and offering the end of this tour and having somebody who is currently incarcerated in solitary confinement on death row in San Quentin call me exactly at the moment where I was on my knees before the grave of the great grandma of abolition Harriet Tubman. I think for me that was the greatest highlight of this trip. Um, however, the whole journey was beautiful. You know, I really feel like this work is powerful because it, it allows us to come together to circle up and practice the principles of transformative justice as we transform and transmute and alchemize um, resistant possibilities. So these ideas of what abolition might be and the ways that plants support us on this journey. And it's so welcoming to arrive in these tea parties in our, our different um, sort of places and understandings of abolition. So some of the folks, you know, had the lived experience of being incarcerated and have defined an abolitionist landscape from that lived experience and some folks were a little bit more resistant um, and a, a little less clear on what or how we would arrive there and so sharing these ideas through the different you know the medium of tea and a tea party with plants that are grown in collaboration with folks who are still incarcerated was you know nothing shy of mystical or magical it's a very very powerful way to engage in what can be a difficult conversation. Um, and so, you know, when I asked her, I mean, what kind of house do you dream of after spending 29 years in a six by nine foot cell? He said, I can clearly see the garden and they'll be full of buccinias, delphiniums and roses. And I wish for guests to be able to smile and walk through gardens all year round. And so, um, and from, from the gardens, I got to experience so much of that magic and alchemy and possibility. And so much that I never expected has come out of this project. And there's just a whole bunch of gratitude and the ability to share it with y'all. Yeah, so thanks again, Sean, for bringing us. Um, and I would love to- Abolition begins with relationship. And that was an important consideration when we were curating this trip, when we were deciding where to stop. 
to that point, Nat and I decrease the number of tea party stops in favor of increasing the number of nature walks, visits to state parks, moments with friends, rituals, land acknowledgments, and time to be simple, to explore, to experience wonder and joy and possibility and play. And that is very much the work. I truly believe that abolition begins with an infrastructure of trust, which is ultimately the building box of relationship. And those relationships grow into the tenets of mutual aid, community care, trauma-informed mediation, harm reduction, accountability, et cetera. Those relationships are what builds a coalition committed to ending cycles of harm. You know, a coalition that can end cycles of harm, that can replace the criminal punishment system, um, that can do so fueled by joy and play and nature. I mean, this tour is a way that I honor my elders, Herman Wallace and Albert Wood Fox, and their, you know, the, the lives that they led and sacrificed on behalf of evolving humanity, right? And so this idea that um, a tea party allows me to, to literally engage with populations I wouldn't otherwise have conversations with about abolition, PIC abolition or an abolitionist lifestyle, um, is really powerful and, I, and really important. And I think the more um, ways that we can create non-confrontational conversations around abolitionist possibilities, um, the more we evolve humanity and the, the more that I personally get to say thank you to my elders <laughs> through this work. Mm -hmm.